Okay, this is the talk uh, break free from maintenance hell with clean code. So also a uh, clean code topic. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Richard. I'm one of the co-organizers of JCon. And um, today I'm gonna be talking about uh, clean code, obviously, and I'm gonna speed things a little bit up so we can catch up the last time. So for a little bit of perspective or context, so you can better understand what we do uh, we develop Rapid Clips, which is an, a visual IDE. Um, we have a lot of talks in the program. We also sponsor of the conference. So if you like to check out Rapid Clips, do that now. Uh, this is how it looks like you can build um, uh, cross platform applications uh, with a UI builder with drag and drop. So this is very nice. And uh, this is how we learned a lot of uh, things about clean code. So I'm gonna be talking about why you wanna use clean code. So this is a little section for uh, your manager that helps you get clean code going and get time for clean code. Then I will talk about three levels of clean code, code smells, and then I'll be sharing some funny stories about 15 years plus in the fight for clean code or with clean code. Um, either way, uh, you, wanna, you wanna have it. Okay. So why clean code? Um, that's a good question. Uh, why should you care about this? So uh, these are some diagrams um, I dug up from books and um, uh, all the time there is a discussion of cost and that's a really good argument to, uh, uh, to uh, convince your manager to bring clean code to the table. And what this sh should show you is if you uh, build a system, and this is a, a fairly young system, uh, there will be a point where the most of the time spent on the system is maintenance. And um, in, this, uh, in this pie chart, it says about uh, two thirds of the, of the project cost is maintenance. Uh, if you're in a real project and it's older, like let's say two years, maybe you know it's way more. So good argument to do something about that and uh, do something about that cost. And also, if you develop something new, you have like 100% of the work is develop the new thing. Don't care about what's there already. If you have to maintain something or uh, add something to an existing system, you will always have to like read the code, understand the code. And this is where clean code comes in. This is where you wanna have a code base that you can understand and that don't kicks you in the butt all the time when you have to work with it. So in total, if you run the, the numbers, um, let's say 25% of your or 30% of your project is reading code. Um, and you can spin this all, all the way around uh, if you like, but somewhere there, uh, it will be, and maybe a little bit more, but there's a lot of money in it. So this is why we have this talk. Um, we should do something about that and help reduce maintenance cost and also uh, free up some time and have fun with software, of course. So this is what this talk is all about. Just be happy, um, have a good time like this dude, um, and just, just celebrate your code. So how to do this? Don't write code. So this is like the first level. Uh, don't ever write code. If you do this, you don't have to worry about nothing. Okay, jokes aside, uh, you, you have to, to write code. Uh, maybe not. You can use code gener generators like uh, Rapid Clips does with its UI builder. You can do a model-driven approach or something else. And, uh, no worries, this is the last time I'm gonna mention Rapid Clips or any of our products in this talk. Just some pointers here. So, the second thing you can do is you can write less code. So you're gonna recycle something from the code you've already written or somebody else had written. So this is where I need a, a little interaction here. Uh, maybe you can use the chat and you give me like a plus one or something else uh, to signal to me that you have written a CSV file import for your application. Has anyone in the crowd here ever done that? Okay, some, some people have, okay. Yes, thanks for the interaction, guys. Nice. Okay. Maybe everybody. Okay. Okay. One guy says Winnie. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what's this all about? So, um, if you write this from scratch, this may be wrong. Let's, let's dig into why this is maybe wrong to do this. So, um, Oh, and I forgot to translate all the slides, but don't worry. The first line says co quality. So, um, 
if I write a CSV import, so um, and I make it, uh, it's usually bad quality. I don't have time to test it, so it's better to use something that's already there. And I always don't have time to write documentation. That's no fun at all. Um, so uh, yeah, and it's cheaper to just use something that's there. So why should I ever write code just in one case when it's your business logic? So that's that's the, the place where you should write code. Um, don't write code for CSV imports. Use a framework that's already there. So do your core thing. Focus on the code you really need to write. So you can uh, recycle in a few ways. Um, you could copy and paste. You can reuse things. Um, there's a rule that says don't repeat yourself. So you will copy a lot of things. So you start off, you have an original source code file. That's a good, good thing. You copy it but it needs some changes. So you gotta go ahead and do some changes to it. And the next guy comes along. He also needs this part of the software. So he's gonna copy it, of course, and he's gonna do some, some other changes. And uh, then you have hell because uh, there are now three artifacts that have basically the same code, but little changes. They did maybe did some really good bug fixes to it, but that's at all hell. So you have to refactor at some times. And there's the rule three strikes and you refactor. So give it a try, do some refactoring. That can help. We're gonna skip that one and go write one to writing clean code. That's why you're here. So there's only one measurement to, to measure the real quality of good code. And this is what the fucks per second uh, in a code review. So if there's a lot of cursing, that's bad. There's just a little bit cursing, that's good. If there's non-cursing, uh, people are sleeping, okay? So let's see how we can get to uh, let loss, less cursing than we are used to. So these are some basic questions, keep them in your head. So what is clean code? Do you want no compiler errors? Do you want no warnings? You want a certain formatting? You want more? Okay, most 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 people opt to want, still want more from all of that. Um, I hope you have no compiler errors in your code. That would be a good starting point. Um, let's see how to do this. Um, it's very very hard to define what is really clean code. So we're gonna hit it from the other side, um, and we will see what is not clean code. And uh, not clean code is code that uh, yeah, suggests a revision. This is a, a very diplomatic way to say that. This is like, um, this is nothing that makes me puke when I see it. So if you see code and it makes you puke, gives you a real nice urge of that. So that's maybe, yeah, that's maybe code you want to refactor on and you want to do something about it. Okay, what are code smells? Code smells are everything from, from outdated comments, uh, commented out code, dead functions, all that stuff. And we're gonna have a look at all that stuff in this talk and see what we can do about it. And these are real examples. I'm not gonna name people, um, but these real examples from 15 years uh, we've collected. It's a lot of fun to have all those. Okay, let's let's start off with a, with a story from Chernobyl, which is a, a, a power plant. Uh, that blew up and uh, let's learn a, bit, a little bit about safety from them. So um, there was problems and uh, people were smart. Um, even though it blew up, they built in safety mechanisms that would warn you if something is wrong with the plant. Uh, the sad story about Chernobyl is nobody listened to the blinking lights that told everybody, hey, there's something wrong. Uh, stop what you're doing. Look at these lights and figure out what to do. And obviously people didn't listen and had a really big problem. So tragic. So uh, I hope you don't do uh, like power plants in, in your work, um, really do, because uh, a lot of projects that, that we see have a lot of warnings. So it's good you don't do power plants. If you do, let me know. So nobody got time for warnings, yeah? Nobody. So who warns me? Um, in Java, we have a really strong compiler that does a lot of warnings. Um, and if you move from, from Java 8 to Java 11, Java 17, 
The compiler warnings are getting better and better. This is really great. This is really a, a big advantage of uh, Java that you get so much good compiler warnings and compiler knows almost everything. So like uh, 20 years ago, uh, it was not that good. Now it's really, really good. And you have also uh, all kinds of uh, static code analysis tools like um, check style or find bugs, spot bugs, um, sonar cube, and so on, which will give you a lot of warnings. Um, and they will help you uh, reduce error. So let's let's have a look how this looks. Okay, let's see. So 20,000 warnings. Okay, a little bit filtering. Okay, okay. Um, who has a project with, um, let's say, zero warnings? Is there anybody that has a project project with zero warnings or, or a project with, let's say, ten warnings? That's also good. Any any projects out there? Oh, George has one. Really nice. Okay. Hello world. Nice. That's also a good one. So um, let's see. Zero warnings is is very good. That's 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 where I want to be. Um, ten warnings is the worst. So ten warnings is worse than twenty thousand warnings. If you have twenty thousand warnings, you know everything's a mess, and you you have to change something. If you have ten warnings, that's really 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 bad because these ten warnings are hell, and you should get rid of them. If you don't, you always have like there are 10 warnings in our code, that's fine. So a new a new person comes to the project um, and he will just like do something with the code and he will fix one of the 10 warnings because he doesn't know these are the 10 warnings we have in our project. And uh, he will introduce another one. And we knew these 10 warnings and we assessed that they are yeah great and we don't have problems with them. The new guy, he will introduce a new warning, and you have still, you will still have ten warnings, and all your, you know, like, like your charts will look fantastic. It's ten warnings all the time, but you have a really big problem. You have a new one, you don't know about it, and it will crash everything. So, good night, goodbye, weekend, done. Okay, so get rid of that. So zero policy warning. That's what you want to have. Warnings um, indicate problems, but not every warning is always a problem. As you can see, uh, if there's a warning on the news that says uh, space aliens are taking people away, this might be a problem for some people. For me, it's not. So um, I maybe want to ignore that. OK, so please configure that and let your colleagues only see the, the relevant warnings and then try to get to zero. That will help a lot. So this is a very generic advice. We will have some more concrete examples later. OK, this again is a slide from management. Um, because this costs money to reduce this and uh, you won't see any changes in the UI. That's always hated by managers if you don't see changes in the UI. So um, yeah, that's just the costs. And uh, this is always optimistic. So cost in production is way more expensive than that um, if you catch it early. So try to catch it as early as possible. Um, uh, that would be really great. You will catch it before tests if you have it in your uh, in your in your IDE, and you will get the you will get the the warnings. So that's great. And um, yeah, why is production uh, so expensive? That the, the line must be way out of the screen. It's because you have like 20 people on a on a call that scream at each other, and uh, people that are allowed to scream on calls are very expensive. So uh, this is just burning value, right? Okay. So don't don't let it get there. We find another way to do this. And we look at a, a few code examples. That's what you're here for. And we try to make our API uh, unambiguous. So let's let's see what is this. So uh, this is the part where you have to look at the slides. So come back from, from, your, from your, uh, your meal and look at the slide. Um, check out these two lines. OK, this, uh, and, and all my, uh, in all my code examples, there's nothing like I have forgotten a semicolon or something like that, or I will trick you uh, with that. This is real code, and this is how it looks like. So try to figure out what, what's in future. OK. Um, so give, give you a few seconds to think about that. So no answer, right? Milliseconds, yes, 
no, 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 no. That's awful because you can't figure it out just from looking at it. You have to like look at the Java doc or something else. That's that's horrible. Yeah, weeks because I uh, because I indicated uh, that it's seven. Okay, I always think of a week or it could be days because it's a week. No, no, no. That's horrible. That's the worst. If you do an API like this, everybody will hate you. You will hate yourself. Don't do it. Do it like this. And gladly, that's the way it is. The new, um, now older, but the new uh, date and time API, uh, JSR 310, uh, provides us with this great thing now punct add days and you can't do a add anymore without any uh, specification what it is you have to you have uh, nice methods that say days so and if you read that you can't go wrong if you say add days nobody will think this is milliseconds okay okay um isn't it plus days um i think that's also there but i think add days is also there okay so this is a fun one this is also uh, this is actually from the from uh, Oracle documentation from from JDK, and um, don't get suspicious about the war. I just put it here to to indicate that this uh, presentation is very up to date, um, but it makes it a little bit harder to to understand. I'm not the biggest fan of war in all places, but uh, try to figure out what that does. So it's a very complicated code. As you can see, there's some internationalization in there, um, doing nice stuff and all that. Okay, this is very easy. This is just that. Okay, and um, that's all hard coded. There's no um, switching local or something else there. Nothing. This is just hard coded. This, um, but if you wanna like uh, tickle your colleagues a little bit, and uh, if they're too sleepy, just give them that, and they have a lot of fun. Okay. So don't do it, do it, do it the right way. So staying in, in, in this, this course of action, this is also code. And this is real code from a real project. Um, and don't forget, we build uh, IDEs. So we sometimes have to find out about uh, things about code. Um, and let's see what that does. Okay, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's too much time because you wanna go in your weekend. So don't forget, um, when I show code, it's always Friday. It's always like six o'clock in the evening. You want to go home. You're already here too long. Um, that's that's taking too long. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that code does. does. Nobody knows. Okay. So um, we did refactoring on that. So we can figure it out and we can go home. So this was the second attempt to do this. As you can see, it got a little bit less messy, but also uh, I have my code now uh, two times. So not really an improvement, I guess. So, okay. This was code just to uh, get, uh, find out if a method is a setter or a Boolean getter uh, or a, a, a getter or a, a Boolean getter. And we need this sometime in our code when we deal with beans and stuff like that. So um, of course you have to, to code it eventually, but for the people that, that work on the higher level, it would be really nice if they can see something like that. So try to do that. So reading is more important than writing. This is what this talk is all about. And I will have a lot more examples of that. But um, studies found that today, developers uh, will produce code that five generations of developers will have to read. And uh, don't get this generation thing wrong here. It's not your kids and the kids from your kids is, is like, project handovers, like uh, you're doing a project, there will be a, a, a team, a guy, whatever, that will come in and take over. That's the next generation. And uh, so uh, please be really nice to them because they have to deal with the things you are doing today and they will have to deal with it. Maybe it's you, so be nice to yourself too. That's, that's all the better. Okay, let's find out about uh, old code commented out code, what, what we want to do with it. So um, it reduces clarity in your code, um, but I really need it, right? I, I need this 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 code. It, it has to be there, right? No, don't, 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 don't. This, this gives you a false sense of security. Um, there are a lot of things missing. So if you just comment out the code, um, you don't know why you did that. Okay, sometimes people write it uh, next to the code, but 
yeah, you can count on that. Um, and um, that's horrible. Just delete it, commit it, and do a really do a really nice commit message on your uh, source code uh, versioning system. That will help, and you can always get it back. You don't need it in the code, because the thing is, the commented out code will not be changed. There will be code above that and below that, and you have to change things because business requirements change and all that. That commented out code will not be changed, and then there will be the day when one guy comes around and he will comment in that commented out code that was not updated for like 14 years. Okay. And you will think, oh, that does it. And it will not. So just delete it. It's way harder to bring the code back. And people will think about if this code was updated and nobody will assume that code that was deleted 14 years ago uh, will have been updated because it's not been in the, in the source file. Okay. And out with it, okay, uh, of course, and uh, Capital Knight Group, which is a really nice Wikipedia article. I recently learned about that. Um, it seems like uh, that's what happened to them and they lost a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Um, check it out, a really fun story to share with your colleagues. Um, you don't wanna be the guy that did that. Um, that's really, 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 really big money. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, uh, you're going to help out with another thing that's structure. And I can only say use a code formatter. And um, there are nice discussions on Twitter. Uh, people, uh, people are saying, um, don't format your code at all. Just let it do the machine. You don't have to argue with colleagues. Uh, of course, it's fun to argue with colleagues where, where the, the braces belong and stuff like that. But um, yeah, don't, don't, don't. Don't do it. Use a code formatter. That's that's really fun because it helps a lot. And I know this is controversial, but um, uh, let me say I'm looking in my my in my glass uh, uh, glass um, bowl and I see code formatting will not be a, a topic in like thousand years. Okay, it will always be. But just use a code formatter. Let me show you why. Okay, um, you should always write those because let's go to this example. You have this code, and this code is pretty fine, right? Okay. And up until to the point where somebody from UX comes in and tells you, so we have to improve on all our click rate. You have to, to click too often with the software. So what we're gonna do is when the document is valid, we will close it. So like the people that work with the software, they don't have to save and close. They have just to save. If it's valid, it will automatically close, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. And you commit and it's Friday and you just wanna go home and everything breaks because that's not what it does. If you use the code formatter, it will uh, move that close to the left and show you very nicely that this is not what you intended. You intended this. Yeah, with the braces, uh, but you didn't see it. So use the code formatter, it will help you for that. Okay, also, you should always write the else uh, branch, always. And you, comment, you, you, you write a nice comment, this is also, this is German, sorry for that, but it's like nothing to do, okay? Okay, this is the point where people should rise and uh, request for, changing government or something like that. Okay, no, no, but nobody dares. Okay, this is uh, sometimes a good idea. Uh, I never found a crowd that agreed with that. So I'm pushing this for years, but it's just not working. Okay, it's up to you if you want to do that. So this is a, this is a, this is a fun uh, comic about a style guide. Um, have at it. It's a really funny story. Give you a second to, to look at it. So this is basically my experience with the style guide, okay? Uh, okay, let's see what we can do about the style guide here. Okay, this, I, I know arrays are out of shape, but sometimes you have to use them. Um, 
just just give it a try. Look at this. Where is the error? Yeah, people coming to you saying there is missing something. This is broken. Um, where is the error? Okay. If you haven't found it yet, it's the same problem as before. I forgot the bracers, and this is just to show you um, that. Uh, our our span in which we can focus is really short and, and mine is super, super short. So I like to have tools that help me with that because most of the time when I show this example, um, like 20 seconds before I told you to, to do it, people don't see it. So what, what this will do, it will like iterate over the first statement in the loop and the, the second and the third will be only executed once. So your code is broken, okay? so. Use the tools. Um, I don't think humans are made for like finding where braces open and close. This is for machines. We should focus on stuff that helps, that really helps. Okay, let's do math. And I know this is an international crowd and don't wanna wanna bash on any education systems, but let's see, uh, let's see how this goes. Um, this is really, really uh, easy. And I put numbers there. Of course, in your code, there are variables. There's no numbers, but it's easier with numbers for humans. Um, so let's see, this is three and four, this is seven. And then there is two and seven, this is nine. So this should be, let's see, 63, right? Okay. Okay, different answers in the chat. Okay, you have a calculator, right? So yeah, what I wanted to do is write these uh, parentheses. Um, and then it's really 63 because there is a rule in math that says you have to do multiplication before you do a sum. Um, but if you write it like in the first line, that's really bad and you are misguiding people and always think about that. It's, it's Friday, it's six o'clock, you want to go home, you don't have uh, time to remember like uh, preschool math, that's not your job here. Your job is to do like rest something, okay? Okay, let's see, then... Um, I would propose to write it this way, and actually nobody does. Okay, but I think this is this is very much uh, more intuitive to do it this way because to get that wrong, you you really have to really really give it a hard try to get that wrong. Okay, so this is eighteen, and um, you could also place parentheses uh, around that. Um, I know that uh, the code formatter, uh, given the the right. Uh, configuration will remove those because they're unnecessary, but sometimes it's good to state your case what you want to do. So could make sense. Okay, so much for math class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more math for today. So let's do, let's do the style guide. Again, try to read that. And um, international crowd I know, but uh, I'm not gonna tell which language it is. You all, I guess you all speak Java. So uh, it's not Java, but it's a real uh, language. And okay, okay, okay. Okay, this reads, using Hungarian notation makes reading codes difficult. And uh, this sentence is uh, prefixed with uh, a letter or a few letters to indicate which type of word this is. So there are nouns and adjectives and verbs and all that. And this makes it really, really, really hard to read it. So don't do it. Especially when you have uh, Java, which is a statically typed language. If you have another language, this could totally make sense, not judging. Um, but if you have Java and a good ID, don't do it because uh, you can write so nice code. This, this could look like, uh, just like the business logic, yeah? like a, a domain specific language. This is really easy to do this with fluent interfaces in Java, uh, but it's just hell if you have like uh, floating eyes and, and stuff like that all over there. Except you're working at Apple. Of course, you have to prefix everything with an I because an iPhone and stuff like that. But okay, this is a different story here. Okay, let's go to my most favorite section, comments. I really love comments, okay? Let's see what, what, what we can do with comments here in clean code. This is from Stack Overflow, obviously. Um, there's a really, really nice thread. Um, yeah, this is a religious talk, uh, as you've seen in, in, the, in the title. This is Break Free from Maintenance Hell. You have to believe in hell, and here you have to believe in God. If you don't, so you're alone with your code. Okay, so fun. Let's see what we can do. Um, you should always comment on what you do 
why not how? Because how is in the code. How is in the code, yeah? So this is also German again, um, but it says return one and the comment says returns one. So I um, explicitly didn't translate these slides because in English uh, doesn't make so much sense when there is a comment that just says returns one and the code below it says returns one. In German, it makes a little, a little bit more sense. And this is really what people do. So why people do this? Why would you do this? Very easy. Someday a guy came in and he said, we have to have metrics about all stuff. And he said, we have to have a metric about the ratio between comments and code. And the, the smart developer thinks, okay, I can do that. Okay, I'll have a lot of comments in there and you get that. So don't, don't do that. Don't do this with the ratio with, with the code and, and comments, you'll get that. Because developers are smart and they find a way to, to screw this, okay? So, okay, let's, let's develop a little example here. So this is your code. Let's have a look at it. What will this do? Okay, so, okay, 18. This seems to be something, um, this seems to be something with, uh, uh, if I can do certain things, yeah? Am I adult? Something like that. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. I guess not. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure. So I'm going to put a comment and the comment says, uh, check if the person is 18. Okay. This comment is very helpful. No, it's not because it misses the, 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 the important information. What's the, the unit of 18? Is it days, month, years? If you have like a, a baby, um, you're going to count with the first time you're going to count with days, weeks, months. Uh, I don't know where the threshold is, but at some point you're going to count with years. Okay. Um, yeah. My kids are in the age that we still count with months. So uh, yeah, 18 months is good. So this is like for baby food or something. Okay. So, and your assumption that this has something to do with years would be wrong and everything would crash. So we try to improve on that. So let's improve. Um, this, this comment just says, uh, check if this is an adult. Uh, okay, this is better. So I'm implying this is years. Okay, this is better. Um, that, would be, that, that would be even better if it's a constant. So if you're not in a, um, a multinational uh, system, where you have, we can put a constant, you can use your IDE, put Java doc on a constant, that would be really great. And you can go as far as um, have like uh, code classes that deal with that, um, get legal age, even better would be maybe in years or something like that. But yeah, you can go on and on and on. And as you can see, there's a, a lot of philosophy in uh, just a simple line of code. So try to wrap your, uh, wrap your head around that and try to improve on that, on, on that point. Okay, we're gonna uh, skip that one and go right to the end of the comment section. Really fun take, give it a read, that's really funny. So if you think this is not very helpful, this is absolutely, tremendously helpful. If you see that and it's Friday, it's six o'clock, you're not gonna think, hey, everyone else is stupid, I'm gonna do this. Okay, if you hate your weekend, you're gonna do this. But if you love your weekend, you're not gonna start, okay? So uh, that's okay. And I think this is really funny. I think we should do this uh, in a lot of places to help, uh, to help out our colleagues to find out what they should do and what, should they, what they should not do. Okay. Let's do uh, the, uh, the last thing with the error messages. I know Aries, not, not in, in, in the good shape anymore. And uh, I hope you don't have to use them. You can use uh, higher classes and, and collections for your work. If you don't, you have a, a hard life because you're doing something with performance. That's always fun. Um, but yeah, what's up with these exceptions? And I hate them um, because they just say array index out of range. So what I was wishing for was like uh, something like that. Area index 15 out of range. Hey, that's good. But it's also, that's also 
not what I wanted. So what I really like is this. I have an array which has a range from zero to nine and I'm requesting uh, the index with 15. So this will not work, okay? So this is really fun. If you have something like that, that's, that's just great. Do that. If you're in the position to write code and give exceptions like that for your colleagues, yeah, please provide those information. This is really, really helpful. You don't have to debug the production system. And yeah, think, think about it. It's Friday, it's six o'clock in the evening. You don't want to debug the production system. You just want to know what to fix, okay? So I'm going to do a little bit on reviews because we are short on time. We started a little bit late. So let's, let's see what we will do. Uh, what slides we will do. Okay, we will talk a little bit about that slide. Um, if you want to do clean code, and if you want to uh, learn from, from those examples, you best learn by looking at code from other people. Um, and I see two types of reviews. And uh, it's not always good if you get, get told there's a review. Yeah, I think about the elephant, which is a, a long, very formal review where you get late feedback. There's one side uh, that does all the review and you get just bashed. It's really, it's, 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 it's late uh, in terms of um, you wrote that code five weeks ago and now somebody comes in and tells you it's all shit. Sorry for the wording, but it's, uh, that is. And um, that's not good, okay? Try to do something different with reviews. Um, Try to do them often, short, informal. Um, so just go to your colleague, talk about code, show them, uh, look at their code. You get early feedback. Early feedback means um, I just wrote this code. Um, can you have a look at it and tell me what I can improve on? And that's really good because when I wrote write code, um, if it's two weeks ago, I don't know what I did, and uh, I I don't get any like really good learning experience from that because I. Yeah, that's all gone. And uh, that way both learn. So if you want to do clean code, it's not just about the rules, what is clean code and is this statement good or bad? It's about how you can really practice that. So I would really, really encourage you to do that. Okay, do peer review. And there should be a mutual exchange. Um, I always like the, the picture of the Jedi, the Jedi master um, for that. And yeah, there. Our benefits, um, you avoid the zone of chaos, so you don't have that much stress anymore. You get personal development. So this is, uh, again, a good argument um, for your manager if you need time for that. So um, that's the best training you can get um, if you can uh, exchange with your peers. And also it improves your code base, which helps to uh, break free from the maintenance hell as your maintenance costs will go down um, as the code base improves and also you have less stress and get more from your pension. I hope, I really hope so. So always leave the, the campground a little bit cleaner than you found it. That's, that's what, I, so what I'm hoping for. And um, yeah, I hope you could uh, take something away from this uh, talk, uh, even though it was not the talk you opted in for, but it still was a clean code talk. And I guess we'll have some, we'll have some uh, minutes left two or three for one or two questions. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Um, question about the slides, I will make them available here in the, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the session planner. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, the, the else block was a joke, right? Okay, this was a joke, okay? Um, I really love in-person conferences because, because you can see if people get it and uh, or if they throw chairs or something like that, that was a joke. Don't, don't do the else block, just to piss off your colleagues, of course, okay? Um, what about comments on getters or setters? Yeah, um, I wouldn't do them uh, if it's really a getter or a setter uh, and I would try to use um, records with a Java 17, um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would do that. 
if if it's a getter, I would uh, I would expect it not to do any any like uh, difficult code. It just gets uh, this and uh, does en uh, does en encapsulation for me. So I wouldn't uh, bother with a with a uh, with JavaDoc or any any comments. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's that's funny. Okay, I see you had a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. Yeah, how to avoid that? Do code reviews. Okay, the question is how to avoid pointless Java doc comments like return value uh, X. Um, uh, tune your tools in a way that they don't uh, like uh, give it uh, the squarey lines or, or that they get pointed out uh, to a developer because the developer will do everything uh, to, to, if it likes it clean, to make this stuff go away. And they will even generate this stuff in just to, just they don't have to write it. So do code reviews and help your peers um, uh, find a better way and tell them it's okay to leave that out. That, that would be my advice. Okay, we're running out of time. It was uh, fun uh, being with you guys. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, yeah. Uh, you can find me and chat with me and you can find me here. I will post a, a link to a Zoom meeting if you have like intimate questions uh, that you don't want to share with everybody. I'm trying to do this like um, uh, a thing where you have an in-person conference and you can go up to the speaker and talk to them. Um, this is what this is all about. And just give me a second to find that link. It's, it's here on the slide, but where did I put it? Okay, I have to find it here. I will post it in the chat in, in, in the chat here um, right after the session, so you can join me. I have Lydia for about uh, ten minutes. Wait for anybody who has to uh, wants to talk, um, uh, and after ten minutes, I'll be gone. Okay, thank you so much for attending. It was a really fun time, and I hope you have a lot of fun at JCon.